My love of headphones brought me from modding, now, to making. Using our Glowforge laser cutter and a 3D printer, this is how I built headphones from scratch. As per usual, I began by playing around in Fusion 360. I had no real starting point other than the basic idea that headphones are two speakers strapped to the side of your head, connected by a band on top. This led to some weird ideas. And then slightly less weird ideas. But then to a fairly simple design that would still use some non-standard building techniques, so I thought it'd be fun to make. Since my favorite part of the PC build project was a stepped feature that I used for the fans, I played around with that idea and thought to make these in a similar way. The headphone cup is made from a series of laser cut pieces that when stacked create the dome. A 3D printed piece will connect the cup, dome, and ear pad. Also, this is where the speaker driver is attached. Holding all that together is a 3D printed piece that clasps onto the earphone assembly. That is also where the headband attaches. To get from Fusion to the Glowforge, I use the Shaper Origin plugin to turn the faces of the bodies to SVGs, then tweak them in Inkscape and start cutting. Once the pieces are cut, I remove the mask. As you can see, it would be pretty difficult to align the pieces by hand. For this, I have 3D printed a form to place the laser cut pieces in for glue up. This was created in Fusion 360 by subtracting the models from a cylinder primitive. Super glue and accelerant work well for this. I just had to be conservative with the glue so it doesn't stick the ear cup to the form. The last two pieces are glued on their own. I keep these separate so that the ear cup can be opened easily. The ear cup clasp and all other 3D printed components were printed in atomic bronze metallic. It fits nice and tight on the laser cut pieces. To bring the color out of the walnut plywood, I applied Danish oil, same as used on the PC case. And these start looking how I imagined they would. Okay, the structure of the ear cups is pretty figured out, now for the headband. The 3D printed yokes came out great. Originally, I was thinking to use hardware store flat aluminum for this, but that turned out to be much stiffer than I expected. I found an old set of broken headphones that I had squirreled away and recycled the headband for this project. The recycled headband had fortunately placed holes that made screws the best option to attach the yokes. I wanted to see it all together and test it a bit, so I assembled everything just before finishing the headband. The 3D printed plate attaches to the laser cut wood via 3mm brass screws and nuts. I think the brass hardware fits so well with this color scheme. Also, I have to come clean here. This is version 3.0, not version 3.1 you saw at the top of the video and in Fusion 360. It's slightly different, and I'll get into why later, but the build process is the same. The ear cups attach to the headband by snapping them into the headband clasp. The flexibility of the PLA yoke keeps it all together. I tried to keep everything easy to disassemble, reassemble. The ear pads I got for these are replacements for Bear Dynamic DT770 Pros. I borrowed a few of the basic dimensions from those headphones as well. Just like the Grado upgrade, I'm going to use leather. Unlike that project, I don't have much structure to work with, so I took some styrene sheets and cut them to shape. I used a heat gun to shape the pieces a bit. Once happy with those, I trace them and cut out shapes in leather. I eyeballed the size of the foam I wanted and cut it to shape as well. Luckily, the metal headband has a top center hole that I can use to add a rivet. 
for some strong mechanical fastening. Barge is used to adhere the styrene together and to the wire headband. Many, many small clips were necessary to hold this together. Barge is also used for the foam and for the leather. I needed a solid surface to use a leather punch, and the garage floor worked pretty well. Then I stitched it all up. Learning from the last time, I waited until all the leather was stitched and then cut the excess with a sharp set of shears. I think this worked a lot better as the edge looks much nicer than with my previous experience. Finally, to complete 3.0, I connect the speaker drivers to the 3.5mm jacks with some wire and solder. Glue the drivers in with some hot glue, and the 3.5mm jack with some super glue. And that's it for the final assembly of 3.0. Everything went really well with the build, but something wasn't quite right when version 3.0 was finished. They sounded bad, not acceptable levels of bad. I used my other sets of headphones as a reference point to try to pin down which characteristics I didn't like from these headphones, and found two main problems. The bass was way too muddy and boomy. It's not the kind of bass that you're looking for. The second issue I found was a strange reverb or echo that was occurring, and it was really easy to tell when I was listening to something like a podcast, where the speakers sounded like they were in a large room or a hall. Um, it was kind of echoey, and I would put on a different set of headphones, and all of a sudden the speaker was very clear. So I knew there had to be something going on with the headphone itself. So I started trying to track down these types of problems, and I came upon the website homebrewheadphones.com. They have a treasure trove of information on testing and tuning uh, custom headphones. The first issue I went after was the bass problem. I did this by adding and removing holes from the earphone cup and the earphone plate. These fixes didn't really do anything, and in most cases they actually made it sound strangely worse. So I knew adding and removing holes wasn't going to work, so I tried to find something that would be a little bit easier to deal with, which was the headphone driver. Up until this point I haven't said what it was, and what I initially used is this. And then, at the recommendation of homebrewheadphones.com, I went to these. Almost immediately, uh, upon removing and putting in the new drivers, the bass was the way it was supposed to be. So that was luckily an easy fix. Should have gone with what they recommended first, but here we are. To correct the reverb issue, I tried adding clay to the inside of the headphone cups to take up space to reduce the open area inside the cup. Once I had added enough to diminish the size by a third to a half, the reverb diminished greatly. So to correct this permanently, I updated the model, recut, and rebuilt the headphone cups with three less layers, so it was less volume on the inside of the cup. This fixed that issue. The new cups worked great, and thus this became version 3.1. I'm very happy with how these came out, and I think that they sound pretty great for something I made myself, and pretty good even compared to the rest of my headphones. So with nothing further, here they are. Huge shout out to our patrons, especially the super fans. You guys are a huge support to us and we appreciate all of you so much. If you want access to all our files as well as behind the scenes at our new studio, that is all available over on our Patreon. Link in the description. See you next time.